Hey everyone, welcome back to your daily crypto update. We're going to be updating you from the charts and prediction from yesterday, um, as well as show you, okay, the most important thing, how I am positioned for a crash, okay? So, look, you don't have to position the way I am at all. Nobody is telling you to position the way I am, okay? I'm simply sharing how I am positioned based on my circumstances, based on my risk tolerance, and I'm not telling anyone what to do. This is just how I'm playing it, and I'm going to explain to you my reasoning on why I'm playing it the way I'm playing it. Have I sold half of my crypto? Have I sold a quarter? Well, that's what we're going to answer in this video, as well as obviously update you from a technical perspective. So, from a technical perspective, look, you see the circle. You can go back and watch last video, okay? And you can see I haven't moved this drawing, I haven't even touched it. That's, you know, this circle, right, is based on this movement pattern right here, right? So, boom, 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 boom. And so that's why I drew that circle right there, is because this movement pattern is a replica of this, but on a scaled down factor. And so with that being said, this should be, this area right here, should be the top so we're still close to that area we can still pop back up into this area uh, but basically this 52 to 55 and a half k is where we are expecting the top to be if and based on this movement pattern right so what you got to understand is this movement pattern can be invalidated right so this is what we're comparing we're comparing this to this but once that gets invalidated, you don't have to necessarily follow that anymore. You understand that? So this is basically our analog to help us uh, gauge the market right now. But that can change. But as of now, okay, this is literally copying this exactly. And so if it continues to copy that exactly, you can see based off here, you got that drop, pop, drop. So depending on how this plays out. Now, the important thing is you got to break this 10 period exponential moving average uh, because that's the first major signal of a trend reversal is when you can get under it and stay below it right so for example here in BTC you can see here's the 10 period right so we get below it but pop right back up uh, use as support get below it pop right back up get below it pop right back up get below it pop right back up so the first thing you want to do is actually see us pop below it and use or not pop but drop below that moving average and start using it as resistance and so this is not like a guaranteed way of, of looking at things, but it's a very, very helpful tool in gauging the trend direction. So for example, like when mRNA, mRNA, which is a stock, well, everyone knows Moderna, blasted off right here, right? You can see how helpful this is as a trend following tool, right? So boom, pop back up above it. And so this is where the trend begins. And it stays above here, 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 boom. Once it pops below, that's kind of what signals to you that this uptrend is over okay now it's continuing back up right now but overall right that's how you knew like this whole bullish move was pretty much over is when you see a breakthrough on really strong volume all right so it's just a good trend following indicator i'll give you a couple more examples like on apple or microsoft stock right so check this out look how simple this is it pops back up guys if you just stay with this moving average Look at this, hugs it, hugs it, hugs it, hugs it, just keeps going up, boom, once it pops down, that's when you could have sold, right? So it's just a, it's just a solid trend following uh, indicator that I use, uh, and I don't love moving averages too much, but I do like this one uh, as, once again, a trend following indicator, okay? Uh, so I'll give you one more example, Microsoft here, you can see, boom, pops back up, and look how it just you it just hugs it so nicely. You see it, so it kind of gives you that signal that you're you're still good. You're still good. You're still good, right? So it, this is just kind of like your your buddy to to support you along the way, uh, and and that's how I use it as right. It's kind of just a confirmation. And then once you know it breaks below like that, you know, oftentimes that's going to be the trend reversal, right? And so that's what you're you're looking for in BTC is a, a real breakthrough that moving average. Uh, followed by resistance there would be a first you know great confirmation of a trend reversal here right so far we're still above that and so far if you want a high probability trade you actually long it right here all right because what's the trend it's up okay so you long it when it pulls back 
that's the more high probability thing to do. But once again, I believe, okay, that we are going to end up crashing here. So I'm not going to do that, okay? So to get to how am I positioning myself, okay, for a crash, this is the most important thing, okay? Take my philosophy and make your own judgment, okay? So this is why I sold everything yesterday besides ETH and HEX, okay? The only reason I, I, I hold ETH is just for gas fees, okay? So basically, I sold most ETH, and I held some just for gas fees, okay? So basically, what we've done here is we've held on to two positions only, I've sold everything else. You can see the positions in red, which are BTC, HEX, and Solana, are my core main positions, I've sold out of all these red positions besides HEX. Okay, so HEX and ETH are the only things I'll be holding through a bear market and through a crash. Once again, ETH because you need it for gas and HEX just because that's my choice and that's what I want to hold. Okay, so you're probably wondering, Alex, why is HEX the only thing you want to hold? Guys, that's a whole nother rabbit hole to jump down. You can do your own research. A lot of people think it's a scam. I'm not here to comment necessarily on that in this video. Guys, once again, I'm showing you how I'm positioning for this market and what is my reasoning. So I got everything I got rid of everything yesterday. <clears throat> okay, once I made that video. And the reason being we're around 52k. Okay, so check this out. This is my philosophy. You can take this and use it, or you don't have to. I'm just showing you the way I think of things, right? So for example, uh, selling at the neckline at around 52k, right? Well, if I'm wrong and if we rise higher, okay, this is where I'll get bullish again. If, if we can cross this second neckline I've drawn, if we can cross that neckline, I'm bullish again, okay? So, for example, that's an 8% move to the upside. So, basically, I sell everything, and if I'm wrong, I'm going to miss out on 8% gains to the upside, which means probably 20 to 30% gains in altcoins, right? So, I miss out on 30% maximum to the upside, uh, but... On the other hand, if I am indeed correct, as I full-heartedly do believe, otherwise I wouldn't come out so strongly, I wouldn't make that video, then I save myself, okay, from 52K. Uh, I save myself, you know, if we crash to 20K, save myself 60%, which in altcoins is like 90%. If we crash back to 30K, I save myself 42%, which in altcoins is like 80%. You see what I mean? So to me, the risk to reward is highly favorable to get rid of everything here. And so I much rather buy back in at a premium if I'm wrong, right? So if I'm wrong, cool, that's fine. I much rather pay a higher price if I'm wrong uh, than hold uh, for a measly 8% instead of protecting myself from a 40 to an 80% drop, right? So that's my reasoning, is it's better to pick your spot, and if we can pick the spot above this neckline, which is highly, highly bullish, that's when I want to be bullish. That's when I'll be willing to pay an 8% premium, uh, opposed to my positions from yesterday, uh, for being wrong, right? I'll pay an 8% premium for being wrong. I don't want to pay a 40 to an 80% premium uh, and hold that, you know, so that may, you know that's my reasoning there. Now, interesting thing to point out during this crash that I expect is it's going to be really interesting to see how Solana and ETH and Cardano, uh, you know, move during a crash because they have far more util utility now uh, with NFTs. Like, for example, I know myself personally, I absolutely am going to have to be buying some Solana and I know I'm going to have to be buying some ETH on the dips because there's going to be NFT projects that I'm going to want to get in here in the next month you know so I actually even if I think the price is a falling knife I still gotta get some because there's you know there's things I wanna buy and the way I buy them is with ETH or Solana you see so they have this really really good use case that they didn't have in the last bear market necessarily or not at least to the extent that they do now so I think that's really interesting and I can't wait to see how they're moving uh, but so far you can see ETH and ADA are not moving very well right now, okay? Uh, but yeah, that's one of the most exciting things I'm looking forward to, seeing how these things hold up. And then um, finally, let's talk about Bitcoin dominance here, okay? And let's talk about this double bottom, right? So you can see my double bottom that I drew up. You ha I have my second bottom undercutting the first bottom. Now, the reason I have that uh, undercutting the first bottom is this is a principle tie in... Uh, you know, William O'Neill, How to Make Money in Stocks. That's a classic trading book anyone should have read or, or should read if you haven't. 
And so the principle here is that the double bottom is much more effective when the second bottom slightly undercuts the first bottom because once again, uh, or not once again, I never explained this, but basically everyone sets their stop losses you know, right below the level. And so you basically stop out all the weak hands, people who were willing to take a loss. And so when you stop out all those people, then you have you know the real people who are ready to, to, to basically push the price higher, right? So that's that principle. You can go read that book to learn more. Uh, but yeah, so that's why I have it drawn up here because if we actually got down here, guys, that would be extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, but right now, we have what looks like an upward slanting double bottom just slightly. I mean, that's just a double bottom. You don't have to call that upward slanting or any of that shit. Okay, and so this is exactly what we saw. Look at this pattern right here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, this is exactly what we saw in 2018, right? And so last time, it wasn't an undercut. This was an upward slanting double bottom. Like, it's exactly like today, right? Now, we talked about this in yesterday's video. Drop, pop, drop, push. Drop, pop, drop push right push through the pivot point of the double bottom and so you guys know how to measure the double bottom price targets you take it from the bottom uh, up to the pivot point and you take that pivot point you stack it on top of this right here right which is the pivot point usually you draw like a support slash resistance right there and so basically that's your price target you can see literally last time right that price target just drew up was literally the top right there before it pulled back right there and then it moved higher Right, so it's the same thing this time. You can see I have it drawn up. If we double bottom here, break through that pivot point right there, okay, guess where that's going to take BTC dominance? Back up to 58%. And if BTC dominance is back up to 58%, you guys know what that means. Altcoins will be crushed, okay? And so another great example of this is when we called the ETH bottom, okay? Now we said it was a low probability of happening, but we said this is what could happen in ETH. Okay, so see this double bottom right here in ETH, bottom number one, bottom number two, and then here's that mid pivot point, right? So when you break that mid pivot point, right, so you measure from the bottom to the mid pivot point, okay, and we're going to get that just down the way. You can see that's how we predicted a 32, 3400 ETH literally like a month or two ago, right, back when we were at this bottom. Okay, so you can actually go back and watch that video. Now, we said there was only a 20% probability of this happening but it did happen and so you have to be open to all scenarios right so that's exactly how you use the double bottom to gauge and project the upside and so we're using this formula onto Bitcoin dominance and that formula shows us Bitcoin dominance heading up to 58 percent possibly and once again if that happens altcoins are gonna get crushed right so that's my reasoning there that's how I'm positioning myself that's an update of the chart analysis. And on top of that, guys, I don't think I pointed this out yet, but you remember this neckline we have drawn up here in BTC, right? Look at this, okay? If you zoom in, we rejected on the dot on that line right there, okay? So, I mean, that's as bearish as it gets. Uh, so the only hope I can really give bulls as of right now, okay, is either NFTs save the market which I don't think is going to happen at this point because the, the gains have been squeezed, right? But if you're a bull, the maximum upside I see is up to this neckline right here at 56K. So if you're a bull, that's what I'd be hoping and praying for right now. But ultimately, right, the reason I say it could get up to 56K is because it depends on which neckline you're using, all right? So this neckline that we rejected is what I thought to be the most precise neckline. Now, based on how you're, you're doing the neckline of support, right, because there's multiple supports here for this head and shoulders, then that neckline could extend all the way up to here, right? So you still have 6,000 points of upside if this isn't the official neckline, but I do think this is the neckline. It makes sense. It lines up perfectly with this movement pattern. It lines up perfectly with the Bitcoin dominance double bottom, and that's why I came out yesterday so strongly to make this prediction. Whether I'm right or wrong, you guys know I full-heartedly believe in what I say, and I have you know great reasoning, and, and I explain myself, and I show you to help you make your best decisions and help you come up with your own judgment. I never tell you what to do. I show you what I'm doing. I show you what my plan is. I show you my philosophy, my way of thinking, and I hope that you use and you take the good from it and apply it to your own trading decisions and your own investment choices. So back to the Bitcoin chart, guys. All right, if we're going to basically try to predict the future exactly here by drawing, okay, you can see this pattern is the exact same. So the next thing we should expect based on this little analog we're using, based on this movement pattern, which has been 
following exactly so far. The, the, the logical thing to expect is this dip, followed by that rise, followed by that move lower, right? So, yeah, that's kind of what we're expecting. Now, is, is it going to look exactly like a straight line? No, things don't move necessarily in a straight line. Uh, you know, this is like a straight line, to be honest. You know, that's the thing about crypto. It can. And so if you actually look at this, look at this, what I just drew up. You know, it's a perfect, it's like a head and shoulders right there. Again, it's the, see this, this would be the left shoulder. This would be the head right there, and that's the right shoulder. Boom, break down, doom. Okay, so, yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy stuff here. Things are lining up, and, uh, you know, we're the only channel calling this. Uh, every other channel is saying 100K. So, at least, you know, you know, respect uh, that you're going to get a, a different view here. Okay, so guys, to wrap up this video, make sure you check the links in the description. If you need to set up a trading account to actually trade this crash and downturn, uh, you can get one here at Femex, guys. It takes two minutes to sign up. No KYC needed. Uh, the only thing about KYC is sometimes it can take two weeks to process, even a week, depending on which, which exchange you use. Here, it's not needed, so you can just sign up like that. Uh, Bybit's also good, but it's not for U.S. traders necessarily. Uh, and then, guys, if you want to join our free WhatsApp group, uh, this link right here will get you into our WhatsApp group. And then finally, guys, if you go to CrashTrading.com, you can schedule a free 20-minute call, as well as you can also get 20% off when you pay in crypto, which that shit's about to crash, uh, so you might as well use it while it's got some value, okay? Uh, and then, you're basically, if you think about it, if you add... A 50% plus crash plus 20% off. You're either getting 70 to 100% off of your course and coaching. So you basically get a trade with a coach for free or get yourself a, a trading course for free, uh, which is the best trading course when because it, it shows you charts and how to trade uh, based on the charts, okay, without emotions, without the news and all that crap that's involved with trading. And, and most importantly, guys, with the coaching, you get one-on-one -on -one coaching. You'll get phone calls, text, when to get in, when to get out. Uh, you're going to keep your emotions in check and make sure that you profit on this downturn while other people are losing money. So, guys, let's rock and roll. If you're interested, schedule a 20-minute call. Let's get you started uh, because, guys, it's easy to make money when the market's going up. And it's a lot harder to make money when the market's going down. So don't panic. Get a plan. Get a coach. And let's rock and roll, guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like. Make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you in our WhatsApp group or I'll see you in our coaching program. We'll see you guys later. Bye.